This is B of C Live, the video and podcast series of Business of Cannabis. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com. Coming up on BFC Live, a conversation with Michael Camarada. He is the president and CEO of Neptune Wellness. To discuss his unique background, he brings to the Neptune Neptune, their mood ring brand products in the Canadian market, and the potential expansion of their brands to new markets. Enjoy this conversation with Michael Camarada. Michael, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you. I want to talk Neptune and Mood Ring and all kinds of things. Can we just jump in? Because I'm keen to do it. But before we even do get into those things, let me hear about you. How did you get into the cannabis industry? Because I find people's uh, paths in are often varied. Yeah, it definitely wasn't like I was going into it for uh, to say, hey, I'm going to jump into the cannabis industry. It actually was because of deodorant. And so I, I've been fortunate in, in building companies since I was a kid, started in gaming, made a little bit of money, then went into advertising, and I started building brands. And my last brand I built was a deodorant brand, and we sold it to Unilever. Then I joined Unilever to help work on the health and wellness program. And what was unique is I learned that cannabinoids, plant-based deodorant is huge because people don't want to plug up their exhaust pipes, right? The armpits of people's exhaust pipes. And because then it goes inward. And so they want a natural deodorant, but they wanted to last for 48 hours. The only way to make a natural deodorant that I could find and we could find was using cannabinoids. Now you would think, oh, the cannabis industry is growing in, in, in Canada, it's becoming really big. I'm at, we're at Unilever, let's go meet with all these, these individuals. We started meeting with you know Calray and other people and found out that none of them were focusing on the consumer package good use. They were only focusing on adult consumption and medical. And so that was the opportunity. So when I was approached to, uh, to, to enter the cannabis industry, it was mainly because we want like Unilever 700 brands and you can make a plant-based deodorant last for 48 hours, which in North America is a huge part of the profits in like Procter and Gamble and Unilever and, and others. And so, Okay, there's Neptune, they have, you know, they're doing extraction, they have years of contracts, they, the whole industry is booming at this point in time, like it's doing really good. I'm um, like, I have four years to, to develop it into a consumer package, good company, and, and, and you know, ideally, right? I walk in day one, cannabis industry changes, 2.0 products aren't the same, it, the hemp prices in, in, in the US plummet. Uh, regulatory gets changed around both in, in Canada and in the US. And uh, my four year plan of gracefully going into the consumer package good industry is now a six month uh, plan, um, to, which is actually probably the fastest turnaround in a, in a model I've ever done, which is, and we've been really successful with it. Um, and then at the same time, we brought, I brought in Morgan Stanley to, you know, help me with, you know, acquiring brands and, and the structures and we have IFF, DuPont, a lot of people that have even Unilever uh, in certain points of the journey. Um, and so it, it was kind of like uh, from a deodorant into cannabis. And what I always liked about cannabis and in, in general from a personal side was I'm highly dyslexic. My brain goes a thousand miles an hour and CBD and really full spectrum kind of always was able to, you know, help me uh, like focus, relax and, and, and you know, not be, you know, work myself up too, too fast because I do work, you know, 12 to 20 hours a day. Uh, uh, my staff sometimes gets annoyed because I sleep maybe only three, four hours. So I'm texting and we have staff in multiple time zones, but like, I'm always focusing uh, on building and that's, that's my passion. So that's how I got to the cannabis industry. That's a pretty unique path. I would say it's the first, we've talked to hundreds of people. None of them have come from deodorant. Very few have come from I mean, more have come from like uh, traditional CPG, uh, but few from the Unilever sort of uh, side of CPG, like the, the sort of big uh, players in the sector. Um, I want to go from that sort of introduction and sort of entree into the industry into what I think many consumers see, which is Mood Ring. And I just did a quick search on the OCS about Mood Ring. And it's so varied about the products being put out. And I want to talk a sort of about that approach because um, you know, if you follow the trajectory of what's happening in cannabis in Canada, especially on sort of adult use side, 
like some people are saying, you know, we're only focusing on this and some are focusing on this and, but very few are taking the brand approach that actually is a pretty Unilever type of approach. That's like, we have a brand and we're going to build within that brand. Talk a little about sort of how you approach that with Mood Ring and, and maybe some of the products that you see and sort of the growth that you've seen. Yeah. So we, you know, when the great thing about us being an extraction, when I inherited a company as an extraction, that we got to see what was moving, what was not. We got to know which farmers had the best quality. We, we learned a lot about the, that process. And we have a very unique extractor, which is patented. So when we were looking about how do I, you know, take a B2B business and make it into a consumer business and focusing on the brands and really what is going to be our core brand. So Mood Ring is one of our core brands in cannabis in, in Canada. And Panhash is our exclusive one, which is in, in, in Montreal and Quebec, right? So it's the error to our headquarters. Um, the, the thing about Mood Ring and Panhash and the things that we looked at in the industry was the cultivation seemed to be a big issue for a lot of the Canadian cannabis players. So we're looking at how can we use our assets appropriately and really connect with that consumer with Mood Ring, right? So vapes are very unique to us. And the, but we also noticed that there's a certain terpene level and a certain taste, like a craft experience that the consumer wanted um, and color coding it. Like think of, you know, like Austin Powers, right? So if you look at the design, look at the packaging, how do we change that? And so with Mood Ring, it kind of, we took elements from all of those areas, our, our uniqueness and extraction, but also our ability to, to uh, you know, use different packaging like hemp products instead of plastic and stuff along those lines. So Mood Ring was really core to, to, to our brand portfolio. And it was really our launching plan to our first major brand in, in Canada on cannabis. And so we, what we did is we looked at, you know, let's find the growers that have the, that, that are really good at growing. Let's find the genetics that we can partner with the growers on, let them grow and we'll buy it back. They can do the growing. We're not touching the cultivation. They can, they can uh, do what they do best. We get it back. We either accept it or, or reject it. We give the consumer a very good quality product that's like has a certain THC level, has a certain terpene level, has a certain taste to it. That's in our flower business, right? And so flowers come out, it's like a drop. They're limited. If you want to try it, it's the best, the best that we could do. It's in, in the whole market, it's limited supply, seasonal, it changes. So, you, you know, then the only next chance you'll have at that strain will be like through a vape. And then, and every once in a while, we'll bring back some of the, the, the flowers just to, you know, make that experience, right? Because we also noticed that consumers were changing their purchasing patterns after the six months, that they wanted a variety, they wanted a different profile, but they also wanted a, a strain that matched their mood. And so if you're hyper and you're going out, or if you're relaxing, you want to go to sleep, or like different things, they, and, and we want to color code it and make it experience that that's easy for them. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, I, I think, I think the Obviously, the positioning is smart. the 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 brand is really strong. The consumers are responding to it. But given your background of the first question and coming to it this way, I don't think that's a surprise. This is the way CPG works, right? This is this is the way. If you had a if you were looking at the sector and saying where are the gaps, where are our strengths, how do we marry those two things together, and then put out products that that hit those goals, I think that's where you would see that. And I want to sort of ask because we've been asking lots of people this. You know, looking ahead, you know, that same approach, that same strategy, that same positioning, that same product array or slightly different, but the brand itself, like, is it positioned for like U.S. growth too? Like, do you, are you looking to sort of how that could grow in the U.S.? Yeah, we're very well aware of all the different state levels, changes that are happening, federal levels and, and the pace. The brand is really what we want to win with, right? You know, it's we want to make a brand that resonates with consumers, connects with consumers, and also has innovation. Like, uh, so in Canada, it's kind of very good because there's a lot of rules and how it's, it's, you know, we know the structures, we know the, the operations, and we have the regulatory side, right? In the U.S., it's changing. You know, it's going to be similar to probably like a, a alcohol company, but the the unique thing about having a brand that connects with consumers is that that consumer is you know the biggest fan is the biggest word of mouth like word of mouth is what the best products are right so like why like in canada people like why are you focusing on 2.0 when it sales were thin? i was like the consumer just told you why they the, the 2.0 sales and it grows fast they don't want to wait to an hour or 45 minutes for an onset they want an onset which is five minutes 15 minutes and 20 minutes 
Well, Neptune happened to have an IP on an enzyme called Maximo, and we're doing clinical studies right now uh, with our formulations to try and make that onset in five, 10, 15 minute onset, and actually it makes it three times stronger. So quick on, full experience and quick out. And so like, that's what the consumer wants in an edible. That's what we believe. And so we, we have to make the experience that for the consumer match with the innovation. And I think that that's something that's very unique and, and we're doing it with clinical studies and there isn't even companies in the, in the States that are really focused on, you know, having a patent and enzyme or a product and how it interacts like a gummy that, you know, you can pop and it's 2.5 to 3.5 times stronger. You don't need a lot of it. And the onset's five, 10 minutes, like, and it's a good experience. You know, it's going to get away from that bad ex first experience with edibles and reduce the, the strain on hospital systems. And, and, and the, the whole predictability, the whole predictability is the, is the Holy grail, right? Like the predictability of onset offset predictability of um, effect. And, and sort of that's to me that that would be the Holy grail. Right. And if at, well, a one, you could you know, studying it and sort of uh, patenting it is sort of one thing, but also the consumer I think is asking for that, especially both net new consumers, but also experienced consumers that are looking for sort of a controlled experience or at least a predictable one. Um, I want to think of sort of talk more corporate -y stuff, if you will. Um, yeah. I want to think about sort of the year ahead and sort of what you're looking at as either key milestones or what you're excited about, whether that's in Canada or the US or product development. Like when you look ahead and, and you think between, you know, if we have this conversation, you know, February 2023, like what are the key things that you think we'll be talking about in the year ahead? I think the biggest thing that the market will uh, and and our, our stakeholders will value is that we're diverse, right? So I think in, we're we're the first to pivot, right? If you looked at there was three extractors in in Canada, Valens, Metafarms, and, and us, right? We pivoted into the consumer package good. We pivoted pivoted into brands, and I think that's going to make the right choice, right? We partnered with Morgan Stanley you know, JP Morgan Chase does our banking. Like we've made all the structural changes that in years to come will be really efficient. And not only that, we're growing on the top line. We, we widened our margins from negative to positive, which in, in a huge time while going through a transformation with supply chain, global supply chain issues and all the COVID things on top of the, the markets that we inherited. Like then in the bottom line, our costs are going down. So we're growing. And our costs are going down and the consumers are reacting to our product. And we have a diverse portfolio of brands that are natural and plant-based. I think the stigma moving forward is going to go away from like cannabis when people realize that it's much more than just adult consumption or medical. It actually has antifungal and antibacterial properties that can be used in deodorants. It can be used in other cleaning products. It, you know, it can be used in toothpaste for, you know, and like attacking gingivitis and things like that. There's a lot of other areas that that could that it can be expanded. So I think the stigma as regulations change in the U.S. and across the world will go away, right? And then you'll look at the company. And I think when you look at the company, the fact that we focused on plant-based brands and organic brands, natural brands, and we have a you know solid ESG story that actually makes a difference. The packaging makes a difference. The consumers are reacting to it and it makes a difference. I think that that will be what we'll be talking about is like, wow, you made the pivot not only through the, huff, the, the hard times, but you actually brought in the portfolio and Neptune is a really diverse consumer package, good company that specializes in plants and, and natural and organic products. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not the one getting texts in the middle of the night because I did, like there is obviously a lot going on. It seems to be sort of in a, in a very thoughtful strategic approach, but also taking into account what is actually happening on the ground, obviously in Canada, but in other jurisdictions as well, whether that's related to sort of corporate governance, sustainability, product, consumers want all those things. Um, and we've talked to folks at Neptune for a long time, and it's been uh, great to sort of watch the the company and the brands evolve and sort of hit the market. So I want to appreciate, uh, want to thank you for your time because uh, within that 20 hour workday, I like to squeeze a few 15 minutes in there to, to connect. So I appreciate the time. We look forward to connecting down the road and good luck in the year ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. Great, thanks, Michael. was BFC Live. If you like this program, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us wherever you find your podcasts.
We're able to do what we do because of ongoing partnerships with Alterna Savings, Cannabis at Work, Cannabis Benchmark, Ken Delta, Gallagher, Headset, and Torque and Main. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com.